What is up everybody? I am George, 80's Transform fan, doing another toy review. Titans Return, still on Titans Return figures. This is Feroz and Hardhead. And uh, again, a, a, a name tweaking to the Headmaster or Titan Master in this regard. Uh, from Duros to Furos. And here is the front of his packaging. It's very standard blister card packaging with a picture of the actual toy here on the front. You can clearly see the figure and weapons inside. Nothing special about it. He's a deluxe class figure by Hasbro. Turn it over is a picture of the figure in robot mode and vehicle mode and the head transformed. And they also show you where the head goes directly inside. No instructions pretty much needed with these guys. On the back, we get a few more guys. We get Blur, Sentinel Prime, and Blaster. My main man, Blaster. And um, some guy at the top, Loudmouth. That's one of the extra headmasters you can get. Uh, and right now, open this guy up. We can get inside. Take a look. And also in this review, I'm going to see how he stacks up against his G1 counterpart. This guy there, file card in the back. I don't know why they just don't slide it in, why it has to be taped down. I'm sure that's not a violation of safety regulations. He is on his file card, nice little artwork, looks a little CGI. The headmaster either co combining with him or detaching from him. Titans return. Back of his card, the tech spec for him and Furos, strength, speed, and intelligence. If you want to, you can pause that and read that and see where he's at. And get this guy out of packaging. His gun is tied down. I guess so it doesn't fall out in the packaging. And now it's falling out here. Um, a lot of ties on this dude. Love these little small Autobot symbols on here. Tell you that right now. Not one of my favorite G1ers. Uh, kind of in like the color scheme, man. And really, I'm not a much of a tank guy. And here is his large, I believe it's still his shoulder cannon. Right here is very big. Move his little clamshell to the side. Move his package to the side. And here's that. I see it does something. I guess his Titan sits in there. I can clearly see that immediately, so I jump to it. Pretty cool looking cannon. Has some good molded in detail. Um, I guess this has like the blast effect or relieve the press pressure when he's shooting. Like, brrr, comes out of there. He has a port here, I'm assuming, for so we can do this. Yep, and we can do that. And not that I meant to get to the gun first, but I kind of like this big old cannon. And his head is still zip tied down. Let's free his head, free his mind, and the rest will follow. All right, let me get this guy back, and we can take a look. Come in on his face sculpt. Looks very G1 ish, don't you think? His eyes are painted blue, his mouthpiece is painted a separate color. He has like the brownish gray here around the front and then the green back there. I love it when it's a lot going on where they just didn't use two different colors and then just get out of there. I uh, like that. Let me bag up. And I'm going to bring him closer. Take a look. He has two small... Well, one small Autobot symbol on each shoulder for a total of two. They could have dropped it here and made it bigger, I think. And then he has a really... I thought one of the other figures was the smallest Autobot symbol I've ever seen. But he has a really, really tiny Autobot symbol down here. And while we're down here, he has some paint apps going on in the waist. I see three different applications here. Um, four. I see the silver. The silver here. The red, we have the yellow here, and have a, a little bit of black in there. And normally these guys cheap out on paint applications, but he has them there. I can see translucent wheels down here in his treads. Oh, because they use the same plastic from his canopy. That's more like it has, bro, cheap out on this. We couldn't get the uniform black plastic, but it looks kind of cool down there. The light hitting it, little translucent pieces. Um... I guess uh only thing else is articulation. He really he's really kibbleless. 
you can see his canopy back here but you know what can you do about that so he doesn't have a lot of stuff going on in the back which is cool and little hollowing there he has a solid back of the legs but there's some hollowing in there which goes on with all these figures but anyway I'm going to get to his articulation and it's pretty much standard for most of these figures so far that I've reviewed in the deluxe class his head he has a little bit of a rock the same thing I noticed with highbrow so with cup and hot rod you couldn't go back and forth and these are were released before cup and hot rod so he can kind of look up he can kind of look down just a little bit. The head 360, I'm happy they worked that in there on these figures. On the G1s, it's just static. It's just stuck there. Um, his arm with 360, he has a ton of clearance. It only come up this far. But I guess you can move it over here. He has a good range of motion there. Um, he has uh, upper lower bicep slash elbow. Yeah, this is a lower bicep because he has another hinge down here. A lower bicep swivel allowing that to 360. Then he has the elbow hinge in here. Allowing for a good range of motion. Then it comes down to his fist. And I love the fact that his fists are green plastic instead of just spray painted over waiting for you to scrape it off. And his fist uh, can move in and out because, of course, it tucks away for the transformation. But you can still move, get a little bit of articulation. It looks like his fist actually, yeah, his fist actually 360. I wonder if highbrow fist 360 and I missed it. Um, come down. It's got nothing at the waist. It's going to give us nothing. But I love how they have two different types of plastics going on here instead of just painting over it. His legs come out that far, good split motion, has an upper thigh swivel, I can see it there, and the legs go front and back as far as you want them to go. You can get whatever you want, he can hit the high hurdles. With this, um, he has a, a knee bend standard, he has nothing at the foot, but his legs, keep, I felt it coming out, some transformation stuff going on right there. And that is his articulation. Let me see if we can get this guy armed up real quick. Take his gun, put it in his hand. I always put the guns in the right hands because I am right-handed. So everybody in my universe is right-handed. And, and the G1 is stuck on his shoulder. I don't know if it's only useful in... Nope. You can get this little piece up, I guess. And now we can get this on his shoulder. I think it only goes this one way. I believe so. Unless you want it up like that. But to get it laying down. Put it right there and there like that. And now he looks very, very G1 faithful. It would have been cool if they worked it out on this shoulder. I guess I could not be so stubborn and switch the gun to the other hand. And that looks a little bit better. Yeah, with the treads in the front, the molding and the detail, this guy looks pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. First thing I got to do is take off his head. Take off his head, give him another close-up on the face. Then I'm going to transform this guy, which is not much to it. Just unfold him. And now this one... This guy has a painted face. If I'm getting it, a painted face and a uh, and blue painted eyes. So this guy he has a little bit more going on, which is really cool. And of course the little head it it can spin 360. This is what allows it to uh, move in robot mode. In his this guy's robot mode. So take the little head, get him to the side. And I'm getting better at this because most of these guys are pretty much the same. Not much different. Fold up the fist. Um, I accidentally popped this up. Pop up the chest part. Straighten that out. Um, fold his feet away. His feet fold in. Most of these guys are the same. He doesn't have heel spurs like the other guys. Like some of the other guys, I should say. Uh... I believe this collapsed over. Forming the treads. 
looking for a place to tab it in. It tabs in right there. Repeat the beat over here. Tab that in under there. Now for the hands, this is one of the most simple guys. Oh, that collapses. Oh, and this tabs in to there. Collapse it on this side. And if I can get it to tap, tabbed in. And I guess, <laughs> I guess that's it. It's pretty simple. These are front wheels. These are back wheels. See him on? He's not kind of, he's not really balanced there. I tabbed it in. He's not. I don't know if something else folds away. The waist. Oh yeah. Uh oh, there we go. And that part folds down. Much better. Much better. See, I don't need instructions. I need instructions at all. And I know the big cannon thing. Right here. Oh, that on tab. It goes right there. Unlike the G1, you can get it up and get some clearance and, and hit some Decepticons in the air. So here's Hardhead in his Cybertronian tank mode. It was always cool to see the Cybertronian figures because, you know, the story was designed on Earth and we always saw Earth guys. But what were they doing on Cybertron? I mean, they showed Cybertronian guys on the cartoon, but we really didn't. We never got a figure like we never got Defcon, some of the other Alita 1, the people they showed us. So this is the way where we got to see what they look like on Cybertron in toy form. The rolling is not great, but it's like hard plastic on hard plastic. But you, it's clear and it is rolling. Real quick, um, the canopy, the orange canopy opens up. The orange canopy opens up. Damn it, oh, I ripped the whole damn thing off. It just slid out of there. You can take his driver, just like in a G1, and sit him in there. And you can get a pretty good look at the guy in there, which is cool. And just to take a look at it in, in tank mode, you can see that the, the treads right there look like it's good for grinding on metal. Um, you can see the molded in detail that they put into the figure. There's the little tiny Autobot symbol showing up in vehicle mode. See more detail in an air. He has pretty decent molded in detail on this figure. Got a little black little panel right here. I don't know if it does anything. It looks like it does. Oh, and let's get, let's come over here. And I guess he can sit right here as well and man the cannon. Bring it around here so you can get a look at it. If he can sit right in there. So pretty cool tank mode. Alright, let's scoot this guy back and get the originator out here. Here is the original hard hit. For you, you can see the similarities and where this figure drew all this inspiration. It's a pretty faithful recreation. Of course, it's, it's more streamlined than the bulkier 80s G1, even though the bulkier 80s uh, era is pretty cool. And he has two main handguns, and this guy only has one. I wonder if the Takara version has two, I don't know. And he, his treads are uh, painted silver. I don't know how it would have looked if it was painted silver. I mean, I always like extra paint apps, but I don't know how much this figure would have benefited from silver paint. And again, much larger Autobot logos. Because it's a it's bigger, but it's the bigness is, is due to the bulk and the, the just that big design. But here they are side by side. Right, I got these guys back into their robot modes, and this is where you see a huge uh, size difference. It wasn't so bad in vehicle mode, but he turned, he unfolds into this big old, almost brickish type thing. And you can see where 
they took the old figure and pretty much updated it and it's a pretty cool update wish it could be a little bit bigger but these are deluxe class guys um let me snatch off the heads here real quick and again this guy has two main guns and this one just has one i'll take a look at the guns in a second here are the two heads or faces side by side you can see the little slots where the eyes are supposed to be right in there are, are completely unpainted but they have very similar uh, mouth plates very similar overall head sculpts they paint the eyes over here which I really really love and the greens are not that dissimilar and again a lot of this could be due to aging but here are the two heads pop his back on and you know in the G1 anybody knows headmasters even though that guy is now a titan master when you pop on the G1 head you get a technical readout of his strength speed and intelligence and on this figure I guess they don't have that little feature it's just they have the little box here but it's just for show here is his gun take a good look at that his main weapon bring out his it draws a little bit similarity there with like the back of it and I'm pretty much the length but that's about it so they're, they're sort of kind of similar in that respect as well uh, and you can see where they put the paint here and they drew from here with the yellow the black and the red and the waist part which is very cool I like this figure scoot that guy out of here let him get his spotlight I like this figure not as much as highbrow, but I like it. I like it more than uh, Cup and Hot Rod. I wasn't a big fan of the G1 version as far as comparing it to other G1s, but I like this compared to the other Deluxe Class Titan Returns I've done so far. His joints are good, unlike uh, Hot Rod. was not a fan of Hot Rod joints. Cup was pretty good, but his joints are good. Highbrow had the tightest joints out of the guys I did so far. And again, I don't know if this guy is hanging around still, but uh, if you can pick it up, it's a pretty cool pickup. And I am George, 80s Transformer fan. Thank you for watching another tour review, and I will see you soon.